Advanced Functions 1.5 Inverse Functions. So today's lesson is pretty much review from grade 11 because you did inverse functions back then and restricted domain and range so that the inverse would be a function. So this is just going to be a nice easy quick review for you. So let's say we're giving uh, an equation such as this where it is the temperature below the surface in a mine with a maximum depth of 5,000 meters. And here's the equation that they give you. So you should recognize that the temperature at a depth of zero would be 11 degrees. Right? So this is just a linear equation. So this is your slope. Remember, we could write it the other way if that made you happier. Um, you're always welcome to do that. So y equals mx plus b, it means it's linear and the degree is 1. So let's say I want to know what is the temperature on the surface. You'd say the depth at the mine there would be zero, so my temperature is 11. So that means we have a linear function starting at 11 degrees. So the question asks you, what is the domain and range of this function? So with most word problems, they usually have a, a restriction on the domain. For instance, back in grade 10, when you were doing quadratics and you threw a ball it went into the air and then it hit the ground. Now, once it hit the ground, the story was over. So that would have been your domain. So let's say the ball landed after three seconds. So your domain would be time of three seconds. So from zero to three. In this case, there is a maximum depth of the mine of 5,000 meters. So that means that the domain is going to be restricted by the uh, depth of the mine. So we're going to say the domain would be the set of all d's because we're using d for x coordinate or independent variable such that d goes between 0 and 5,000 meters. So if you're asked to find the range then that means you're going to need to plug in the values of 0 and 5,000 to find out where it starts and where it would end. So I drew a little graph for you over here. So you can see at time zero, when d is zero, then the, not time zero, sorry, this is depth of zero, the temperature is 11 degrees centigrade. So we go from 11 up to, I plugged in 5,000 into this equation for d, and I ended up with a value of 86. So the range is going to be the temperature at time d such that, and we're going between 11, and that's the temperature, and it goes up to 86 degrees when you're down at 5,000 meters. So finding the inverse of this would mean find the depth in terms of the temperature. So we would change our coordinates. We'd have depth on this side and the temperature here. So if I said, if the temperature is 55 degrees, how deep am I in the mine? That would be what you're doing. So in order to do that, for this question, all you have to do is solve for D, right? We want D in terms of this. So we're going to find the inverse of this by solving for, I'm going to change the T at D to just temperature. So 11 plus 0.015D. I want to isolate D, so I'm going to subtract 11 on this side, 015D, and I want D by itself, so I'm going to divide by 0.015 on both sides. So that means that the depth at a certain temperature would be equal to T minus 11 divided by 0 0.015 and there's your inverse for a word problem okay so we're just isolating a variable in this case what is the domain and range of this new inverse function well if you remember um, in grade 11 the domain becomes a range and the range becomes a domain so my domain here now would be this and this would be my range and that's all you have to do so the domain here is going to be, um, uh, we're changing the range. So, so the domain is going to be D 
not teak, sorry. It's very hot today. Hopefully where you are, it's not like that. The temperature, and the temperature is going to be between 11 and 86. And the range is just going to be whatever the domain was. So in this case, it's going to be D and 5,000. So if I were to draw this the other way now, we'd have the D on here and the temperature along here. Okay, so the basic rules for inverse functions, and we've done this in grade 11 again, I've written them out here for you, but we'll talk about them. The inverse of f at x is f negative 1x. This is not f prime x or um, 1 over it, as some people sometimes think, because it's a negative exponent. It's just terminology that says this is the inverse function. You can only use this notation if the inverse is a function. So you know that when you find, well, we'll talk about that in a second, but the graph is reflected about the line y equals x. So I have... A parabola here so if this was my parabola and I want to find the inverse then it would be going like this right remember these beautiful drawings that you did back in grade 11 now the problem is that the inverse of a quadratic is not a function and the reason you know that is because it does not pass the vertical line test right so vertical line test fails so not a function. Now there's also something called the horizontal line test. So this would be our vertical line test. A horizontal line test is kind of just saves you from drawing it. It says if you draw a horizontal line across a function and it crosses at more than two points, then the inverse will not be a function. So this would be the horizontal line test line test. So we had two crossed in two places so the inverse would not be a function. <coughs> so not all inverse relations are functions. So if we solve for this equation it wouldn't be a function for the very reasons we just talked about. To find the inverse algebraically switch the x and y coordinates and solve for y. If you have coordinates a, b on the function then BA is on the inverse, I should say then. Okay, so if I had 1, 2 in the function, then 2, 1 is on the inverse. It's that simple. Just switch the variables. And you can do that if you have coordinates. The domain of the function becomes a range of the inverse, and the range of the function becomes the domain of the inverse. Okay, so let's take a look at a little quiz question that you would have done back in grade 11 as well. So find the inverse of this quadratic function. You know it's a parabola with a vertex of 3 and 5 and a vertical stretch by a factor of 2. Restrict the domain so that the inverse is a function. Okay, so we're going to make a statement, and you should too, for inverse switch variables. Now if you started off a question and it said f at x equals this, then you should say let y equal f at x. Okay, so if I had if I had this first, you you don't want to leave f at x in there. You would say let y equal f at x. And then you would have written this for inverse, switch the variables. So then I have x equals 2 bracket y minus 3 squared plus 5. And now I need to isolate the y. So you have to follow order of operations, so in reverse, so plus 5, I'm going to subtract 5. I'll do it step by step here so you don't miss out on anything. And then, that's an equal sign here, now I'm going to divide by 2. And then if I want to get rid of this square thing, then I have to take the square root, which is going to give me plus or minus if it's a square root, you always have to have plus or minus. And then I would bring the 3 to the other side, so I would have 3 plus or minus the square root of x minus 5 over 2. 
Okay, and as you know, this is not an inverse, so I can't state f negative one x here for this. You know it's not, um, you know it's not a function because there's two branches to it. So if you were to sketch it really quickly here, we would have started with something at um, three and five. So let's say this is three and five here, and it's concave up, so like this. And then when I reflect it, this point here, 3, 5, becomes 5, 3. And we have a parabola going this way. So you can see it's not a function. Now, in order to restrict the domain, which is what, what they're asking for here, I need to know from here, right? Because as soon as I leave the vertex, I have one arm of it going this way. And I have the other branch of it going this way. So if I can just talk about one of these branches of the parabola, it will be a function. So in order to be a function, I could have either this, y equals 3 plus the square root of x minus 5 over 2. That would be the upper branch, or I would have this one. Now that's not restricting the domain yet here. This is just showing you which parts belong to which part of the graph. So to restrict the domain, I would have to say, and I ran out of space, I'm just going to put it over here. The domain is going to be x such that, now in order to restrict it, I either want x to be greater than or equal to 3, which would give me the upper branch, or x to be less than or equal to 3. So x is greater than or equal to 3, and an element of real numbers. Or I could have said, oh, I want the bottom branch just because I want to be fussy. So that would be less than or equal to 3. X is an element of real numbers. And again, where you're restricting the domain is on the X coordinate of the vertex that you started with here. Right? So the vertex going this way. So I want this. This was 3, 5, so I want to restrict it so that I have one of these. This is 5, 3, right? But I want to restrict the domain of the original function, so the inverse is a function. And that's why I chose 3. So don't make the mistake of using 5, because that's not the original function. You want to restrict the domain of the original. Okay, so that's pretty much what inverses are all about, and a pretty easy lesson. Not to worry, things will get much tougher for you later on. Hang in there.